Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to see the effective length of column and slenderness ratio. So let's see first what is effective length, then we will see the slenderness ratio. See the effective column length or the effective length of column can be defined as the length of an equivalent pin ended column having same load carrying capacity as the member under consideration. What does that mean? For example, if I have a column like this, there is a column whose both ends are fixed. Okay. So if I want to convert this into pin jointed, that is simply supported at both the ends, I want it pin jointed at this point also and at this point also. So I am converting this length into the pin jointed one. So to convert this, I will convert this normal length to the effective length. So it will be like this, this one. So only this one length will be considered as effective length, not the total one from this point to this point. Okay. So what does that mean? Effective length can be defined as the length of an equivalent pin ended column. You have to make it equivalent to the normal one and normal one will be which one? Equivalent will be pin ended column both ends must be pin ended so you have to convert that so there will be some conversion factor so generally what we see what will uh, take effective length is it is denoted by le and it is taken as k into l so this is the factor which is multiply with the normal length to convert it into the effective one okay and after the conversion the load carrying capacity should also be the same under the consideration okay load carrying capacity will not be affected so that is known as effective length. Then there is another definition effective length or LE or KL. It is denoted by LE as I told you or KL also. So of a column is defined as the distance between successive inflection points or points of zero moment. As I told you, they are they will be the distances between the two successive inflection points here. So that one will be the effective length here. If you are taking the example of both ends are fixed, then the smaller the effective length of a particular column the smaller its danger of lateral buckling this one is very important note okay you have to remember this smaller is the effective length smaller will be the danger of lateral buckling means lesser will be the length of that column obviously you know because short columns will fail by crushing not by buckling so and crushing strength is generally more as compared to the buckling so there are less chances that they will fail in buckling because buckling will be occurring in the slender columns like this not in like this okay and greater is its load carrying capacity so effective length of column should be as low as possible so that its load carrying capacity will also be increased and there will be less or smaller danger of the lateral buckling then then let's see what is slenderness ratio see before starting the slenderness ratio actually i want to show you one table from is code is and which is code i will be using I'll be using an IS code. I'll write, write here. It is IS 800-2007. This IS code. In this IS code, they have given the various effective lengths. I'll tell you on page num which page number they are given. Let me show you. So this is the table from IS 800-2007. Table number 11. In this, they have given the effective length of prismatic compression members. Means the rectangular members generally so for that they have given the for the compression member they have given you the effective length now what page number i have the see table number is 11 that you know and is code is is 800 2007 what about the page number so from page number 45 i have taken these values i will be taking these values so let me show you some of the examples as i told you if both ends are fixed i have given you this example okay this one so if both ends are fixed that one that what does that mean the diagram will be look like this so it will be only this much length will be considered as effective length so it will be 0 0.65 times l so what will be the value of k here 0 0.65 is the value of k here okay then similarly if one end is both ends are hinged the effective length will be same that is one l only one the factor will be one here similarly they have given one roller one fixed one hinge one fixed both end fixed like this so from that from this page number uh, table number 11 and page number 45 you can take the effective length of columns now coming back to our uh, our subject 
we have seen the effective length now let's see what is slenderness ratio so the slenderness ratio what is this c the ratio of effective length effective length is denoted by what i have told you it is either denoted by le or it is denoted by k into l okay so what will be the effective uh, slenderness ratio it is denoted by lambda so it is the ratio of effective length to the least radius of gyration radius of gyration is generally denoted by r and it is take, it is saying that it should be least one least one means the minimum one so i can write like this le by r minimum or kl divided by r minimum so this is the formula for slenderness ratio or you can define it like this in the words it can you can define it it is the ratio of effective length of column or effective length of the member to the least radius of gyration least means the minimum one so that is the slenderness ratio of the column okay or it can, you can define it, it like this it is defined as l by k where l is the effective length either you can write l or le then to the k uh, and k is the actually this one see it is defined in some books and that's why i have written like this in some books they have given like this l divided by k so for k means your r minimum and l means your effective length okay so in some books effective length is denoted by small l like this only and this r minimum it is denoted by small k so that is the ratio and that ratio is known as slenderness ratio now in is code i'll show you from where you can take the values of slenderness ratio for different members let me show you this and is code will be same again which is code is 800 2007 okay so from this see we have seen what is effective length and from where you will get the uh, values of effective lengths i have told you it is given in table number 11 effective lengths now let's see where slenderness ratio values are given table number 3 and page number is what 20 so on page number 20 and table number 3 they have given you the maximum values of effective slenderness ratio let me zoom this for you see the first type of member is a member carrying compressive loads means it will be compressive member or compression member resulting from dead loads and imposed loads imposed loads means the live load means that member which is subjected to dead load and live load and it is type of compression member for that the maximum slenderness ratio value is what it is 180 180 is the value kl by r they have given here then the next one the tension member in which reversal of direct stress occurs due to the loads other than winds or seismics means there are no loads uh, which are subjected like this means there will be no wind load there will be no seismic forces and that tension member for that tension member the slenderness ratio will be 180 then a member subjected to the compression forces resulting only from combination with wind load and earthquake load see for the normal compressive forces or the compression member the ratio is 180 but if you are considering the wind load and earthquake load or earthquake actions the uh, slenderness ratio is 250 then compression flange of a beam against lateral torsional buckling that means if the type of structure type of member is the beam and in even in beam if it is a compression flange flange member i have shown you what is flange what is web member of a particular beam so for that the ratio is 300 then a member normally acting as a tie in a roof truss means the tension member in a roof truss or a bracing system which is not considered effective when subjected to the possible reversal of stress into the compression resulting from the action of wind or earthquake forces see so that member note for this see it is that member which is a tie member means the tension member in a roof truss or the bracing system and they are subjected to what action of wind and earthquake forces and the last one members which are always under tension but it should be other than the pre-tension pre members so those members which are always under tension those members for that the effective slenderness ratio will be 400 okay so which table we have used for the slenderness ratios it is table number three and page number is what it is page number 20 and which type of is code we have used which is code we have used it is is 800 2007 okay so this was the video on effective length of column members and slenderness ratio thank you